Hi everyone, Starly here. I'm going to be doing this series that I hope to be doing regularly where I will be taking a look at the manga that I read on a weekly basis and just giving my thoughts on it. Right now, the manga that I read weekly are just the Shonen Jump manga, so that's all I'll be going over. Right now, there are only a couple of the weekly Shonen Jump manga that I don't read, and those two are the Mission Yozakura family, as well as Earth Child, so I'll be taking a look at all of the other chapters except for those two. At the end of the video, I'll also be taking a look at the table of contents and rankings for the weekly Shonen Jump issues so we can see how each manga is doing and if any look like they might be in danger, it looks like we might have some. So we'll take a look and see how those are doing. So let's just jump in here. And the first one we have to look at is the high school family Kokosei Kazoku chapter 93. And as we can see, this chapter is one about the father, Ichiro, and how he has a bad back. So I'm going to take a look at it on my phone and just leave the image up on here because, of course, you should go to the app or whatever is available in your country to read and support the manga. So this chapter is one about the volleyball team. And we have the Nishinoya character, lookalike character here. And his character is pretty fun, but this chapter is just one of the okay chapters of High School Family. There are some chapters that I really do enjoy of this manga, mostly the Shogi Club arc. Like, that has been absolutely amazing and I'm very happy that Shonen Jump has finally had a successful shogi manga, though not completely shogi manga. And I also enjoy the cat episodes. So the one with Gomez just being totally punk and hilarious. But chapter 93 here is just one of those okay chapters. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go to the next one now. Okay, so the next one is Me and Roboco, chapter 96. And this one is particularly interesting because it comes with a little, a few color pages at the beginning. And this features the famous cosplayer Inako. And I mean, she just totally nails this Roboco cosplay, and you can check that out on her Twitter or in the chapter here, and it's just super cool, and I love it. And in general, like, I just love me and Roboco. It's just such a great manga. Just hilarious. I love all of the stupid jokes in it. I know not everybody does, but I do. <laughs> so this Roboco chapter itself is a continuation of the previous chapter where she meets up with uh, this character she claims is her ex-boyfriend, but it's really just like this uh, evil dude who is trying to kill her. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing just like remembering this chapter because they have this super epic looking battle, the most epic battle in me and Roboco yet, and then they have this one shot that I think this was a parody of Sakamoto Days, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure it was from that one, but I'm not 100% sure, so if I'm wrong, please correct me on that. And then, of course, we get more Jujutsu Kaisen parody, <laughs> where Roboko reveals her domain expansion, which she just talks to people. <laughs> I guess that's a pretty powerful ability, attack ability to have. We have another parody here that I think was also a parody from Jujutsu Kaisen, but I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but the pose is very similar to something from another manga for, for sure. So that was a very solid chapter of me and Roboco, and I hope other people enjoy it as much as I do, and I am definitely excited for the anime. They also mentioned that 
she might be doing other projects as well. And one thing I really hope she does is become a VTuber, because I think Ruboko would make a great VTuber. So hopefully that can happen too. So next we have The Elusive Samurai Chapter 70. And this is a huge chapter of The Elusive Samurai. A little bit of background first. So The Elusive Samurai, you know, it's one of those series where it starts off and you're like, is this good? You know, I'm not so sure. And it has a lot of like, okay, the chapter was good, but was it amazing? The characters, I feel like they're a little bit difficult to get into the characters because they are so young and that makes them a little bit unbelievable, a little bit hard to relate to. But there have been some recent chapters that have been absolutely excellent and the art is fantastic. And so I have been really enjoying it. And of course, so this chapter we get a little cameo from Koto Sensei in the color page here, and that's really cute. But this chapter is, of course, where they win the battle, they feast, and then they drop a bombshell. Where the main character, and obviously this is going to be a spoiler if you haven't read it yet, this is chapter 70 again where the main character introduces himself as the heir Hojo Tokiyuki and the way that he's introduced here with like a triforce and just like so much energy coming out of it is just so cool and amazing it was just a wonderful chapter I can't wait to read more of this manga and it just has some of the most fun characters just great designs and just read it if you haven't yet and I am sure it will get an anime eventually because it's just a very solid manga you know I think it's like one one of the first like historical period manga that we've had in Shonen Jump so next we have Donon Dorononon chapter 30 <laughs> Donon Dorononon Donon Dorononon <laughs> chapter 30 <laughs> That's always just such a fun name to say, um, but unfortunately the manga is just okay. I still read it because I think it's cute and the main character, I just love that his name is Dora. <laughs> and there can be so many jokes made with that, but I don't think this is going to last. But let's take a look at the chapter. So in this chapter, again, spoiler, we have uh, one of the characters has died in this chapter. And so the other characters are paying respects to him. Get a nice close-up view of all the characters. But most of all in this chapter, we do see at the end that there is... If I can get to the end here when I'm scrolling. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so one of the things we see at the end of the chapter here is the person who is the traitor. We don't know who they are still. From my guess of who it is, I think it seems like someone who we haven't really seen before was like a background character. It's obviously a man, we can see that, but we can't, I just don't think there's been many characters that it could be. So I'm not sure if it's anyone that we've really seen much of before. And I'm not good with names, so I don't remember any names for other characters. But I think next chapter we'll see who it is and finally that will be revealed. So next we have Super Smartphone Chapter 10. And this features a color title page. So that is really good for a new manga that Chapter 10 is a color page. That means it's doing well, but we'll take a look at the rankings later to see how it's really holding up. So this chapter, we still have the main character, Q, trying to catch another smartphone or trying to find another smartphone user. And we see the main villain so far, Zenichido. And we see his lackey who is just totally gay for him. <laughs> and yeah, I've got nothing wrong with that. It's nice. <laughs> If you didn't know, I like BL. <laughs> well, I like shipping characters, shipping guy characters together. So if there are two guys that can be shipped together, I will probably ship them. 
and <laughs> no one's off limits. We get to see Q's parents and they seem to be a little bit onto something is happening with him, but they also don't seem to care enough to do anything about it. We also get some story with the character that Q is trying to find named Mora, and we see that he's just like <laughs> a pretty bad teenager here. He just like goes to the pachinko parlor when he is definitely not old enough. It seems like they might be doing some underage drinking here. And he likes to break into houses. And his friends think that his father is really strict, but it appears that his father just doesn't give a shit. So he wants to just, you know, be bad and act out so his he can be noticed by his parents. At the very end, we see a little twist where Q realizes that he's the one who's been baited into this situation and he actually has a little control over it. So it'll be interesting to see how he hands handles this in the next uh, chapter. Okay. Next is Aliens Area Chapter 6. So I am loving Aliens Area so far. It is so fun. I love aliens and like the designs are so much fun. And here we get to see like a fight scene where, um, let's see what his name is. Name. <laughs> Do they say his name? Okay. <laughs> okay, so in this chapter we see a really pretty epic fight between the guy with the black hair and the X on his forehead and holding the cane and this assassin guy, supposedly assassin guy. I'm not completely convinced yet that the the octopus alien thing, I'm not convinced that he's actually on the side of the princess and it looks like he has been lying to the princess. So it's going to, you know, it's going to be fun to see just how they deal with this in the next chapter. But this was a pretty solid chapter for chapter six. I do think that the princess, the design of the princess is a little bit boring, but, you know, I think that's just like a minor thing compared to the other stuff that happens in this chapter. So I do think it's pretty solid and it will probably rank pretty good. We'll see how it goes. Okay, now we're on to Akane Banashi chapter 21. And in this chapter we have Hikaru, this uh, voice actress who is doing the, we call it the, the coin purse story because they find a purse, a little purse with coins in it, and yeah. <laughs> if you've seen the uh, Rakugo anime, I just call it Rakugo anime because it's got Showa, Nakugo, no, Genroku, Showa, no, Showa, <laughs> Showa, Genroku, <laughs> Showa, Genroku, Nakugo, Shinju. So if you've seen that, they do this story in it and it's just very emotional and just really well done in there. And it does seem like Hikaru is doing it really well in this one as well. She is obviously very talented and she is very beautiful. I just love her character design and I'm glad it seems like this manga is doing really well and will be around for a while. Of course, the other thing I love about Hikaru's character is that she's also from the country and trying to hide it. I don't know why that's such a fun trope, but it's just really cute when a character is like embarrassed about their their background being from like the country. They want to act like they're cool and from the city. And we end the chapter with the audience being very sure that Hikaru is going to be the winner. But I think that Akane will come in and just completely blow everybody away with her performance. So I'm really looking forward to how she's able to overcome the Hikaru's performance. <laughs> so now we've got Blue Box Chapter 60. And my opinion on Blue Box is I absolutely love it, <laughs> of course. It is more of a shonen romance but it doesn't have like fan service or anything like that. So if you don't want fan service in your romance manga, then Blue Box is a really solid series to read. And in this chapter, I 
I forget the name of the girl. I said, I'm so bad with names. I forget the name of the girl with the, who is the friend zone character. But she, is, I mean, I saw her this chapter and she is just looking absolutely gorgeous and I love her so much. And of course, I love Chinatsu, who is the main girl character, but this other character, I love her too. I love her just a little bit more, I think, and I hope that she would win, but it's not looking promising for her, I think. At the end of the chapter, Chinatsu and Taiki talk about meeting up, but it seems like it's going to be cutting it awfully close to another event they have, so I don't know if like maybe I'm a bit wrong on that, or maybe that will be a plot thread. We'll see how it goes in the future chapters. Okay, next we have P P P P P P P P P P P P Chapter 40. In this chapter, we just have like, oh, we're about to start the contest. That's it. It's not like the most exciting chapter. Though we do get an introduction to a cute new character. Wolfa Shishida is their name. Uh, it looks like a guy. So maybe it's a guy. And it looks like that he's going to be cutting his hair maybe. So we'll see how he looks in, in a future chapter. See if he gets upgraded or, you know, maybe it's a girl hidden under there. I don't know. It's not very clear yet. We'll see. Witch Watch, Chapter 69. <laughs> of course, we are at Chapter 69 of Witch Watch. And I love Witch Watch. This is such a fun manga. It's just so much fun. <laughs> In this chapter, we get this like super cute title page. Neka kawaii. And Nico saying, I'll introduce my method of learning new magical spells. And we'll see how that goes. Of course, it doesn't go well. This is a series that it's hard to describe in words because like the visuals are just, they're so impactful for this series. And in this one, it's no different because it's the magical spell that Nico is teaching or showing people how she learns. It, it changes the expression on the face of the people she's casting it on, which is not its intended effect, of course. And it's hard to put into words the expressions on their faces, but they all look very weird and dopey, and <laughs> it's so funny. We see at the end of this chapter that Nico is such a sweetheart, such a nice girl, and I love her a lot. And hopefully one day this will also get an anime. But the rankings, they tend to be kind of up and down, so we'll see. Undead Unlock chapter 118 and I'm really liking Undead Unlock but the rankings for it have been all over the place recently and it's been in the bottom a lot recently even though like some of these chapters I think have been really good but I think that some people were not happy that the main girl character Fuko was not around for a little while so maybe that's why it was ranking low but we do have some epic battle scenes going on here. We just got out of one epic battle. Now we're into another epic battle. And I don't want to say much about it because there will be a lot of spoilers. But we got Tatiana and we've got another character making an appearance who hasn't been in in a while. And I am looking forward to seeing how this goes because honestly, I've got no idea at this point how this series is going to go. But I don't think it's going to be wrapping up anytime soon, so I'm sure we'll have plenty more for a while. Sakamoto Days Chapter 78. And for those who are not reading Sakamoto Days, get on it because oh my god, if this gets a really good anime adaptation, it will... I mean, I'm not sure if it will be the same level as Jujutsu Kaisen, but I think it's going to be up there. Like, it is just some of the most epic action I've ever seen in a manga and this chapter is no exception to that so <laughs> we have a a battle here where the characters are like jumping from car to car and just having like this 
crazy battle on the highway, fast moving cars. Of course, I can't remember the characters' names like at all, but we have the reappearance of Veil vale Girl, which I don't know how the fuck she got here because she was wicked far away. So <laughs> she must be able to move extremely fast to have gun in here like faster than, you know, a car that's probably going like 80 miles per hour. So she, I just love her character. She's so insane and so cool looking and just badass like every character. And at the end here we see someone, one of the characters is someone who is banished from the Assassin's Association. I, I forget what the JA stands for exactly. Is it Japan Assassin Association. I don't know if that's right, but I'm gonna say it is. And it's like, how can you get banished from an assassin association? Like, what are you, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> so we'll see what his backstory is, hopefully in the next chapter or one coming up soon. Nuri Dragon Chapter Five. Um, I am, of course, really enjoying this manga, but it's really different for a shonen jump manga. So I'm wondering how it's going to go once it starts to get ranked. It is a slice of life shown in manga and the main character is this girl, high school girl character. So will she appeal to Shonen Jump's fan base? I hope so because I'm enjoying it. My husband is also enjoying it and he only reads this manga and Akane Banashi. He doesn't read any other Shonen Jump manga. So hopefully it will stick around and I'm not sure if there's going to be a whole lot to always say about this manga because it is Slice of Life and in this chapter, you know, she's just talking with her friends, then she's talking and hanging out with her mom and <laughs> I think that's really cool that her and her mom play video games together. Um, unfortunately, like I love my mom but that's something that I was never able to do with my mom because she doesn't, you know, she's from a different generation, she didn't play video games at all. The only person I had to play video games with was my brother, and yeah, <laughs> that's it. And nowadays I play video games with my husband, so right now we're going through like every Tales of game that we can play, and we're on Tales of Zillia. We, we're probably like, like probably about five to ten hours into the game, so we still have a lot to go with that one. Oh, you hear it's rain aims, right? No, the, the other one. <laughs> What's the... Finn. Finn Ames. That's what we want. Finn. Mashal, Magic and Muscles, Chapter 115, and congratulations, Mashal, on the anime announcement. So, for Mashal, I am so-so about this series. It's a fun series, but it's not like the most exciting or best series so I'm still gonna check out the anime when it comes out and I'm still reading it so it can't be too terrible or anything. We have my favorite character here Finn Ames and I think that's how you pronounce his name <laughs> and he is having his hey I'm actually cool too chapter and he can actually hold his own in battle and good for him because he deserves it. Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 190 so <laughs> Here we are, another battle, uh, or the continuation of the battle, rather, with Hakari and this other dude. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. <laughs> Let me see if it says it at all. <laughs> Kashimo? <laughs> For Hakari's domain, or sorry, Hakari, yeah, domain expansion, I just don't understand it at all. It's just so freaking weird and crazy and just <laughs> it'll probably be cool when it's animated actually when it's animated viewers are probably gonna be like what the hell is this so we'll see whenever that actually comes out Hakari's a pretty cool character and of course i ship him with the other person who seems to be a, a trans girl i forget her name off the top of my head as usual but she was a fun character and hopefully we get to see them together again. At the end of the chapter, we get another look at Maki, who is just... Oh, I love her so much. She is just 
oh my gosh, she is my Jujutsu Kaisen waifu, <laughs> for sure. And I can't wait to see more of her because she's just so badass and, you know, even though she looks, I, I won't say how she looks for people who haven't seen it yet, but she has changed a lot and she just looks so badass and cool and I love her a lot. So that is the end for Shonen Jump chapters. Let's take a look at the rankings and see how the manga are doing this week. We're looking at year 2022, issue 32 chapters. And at the top, lead color, me and Roboco. Awesome. Congratulations. It's doing so well and I'm so happy. Which watch? I mean, we've seen this at the bottom of the list and now it is number two on the list. So that is really great to see. I am looking forward to more. Jujutsu Kaisen, as usual, that's number three. Then we have a one-shot. Obviously, we don't get the one-shots, unfortunately. I hope they do give us more in the future so that we can actually read those and enjoy them as well. High School Family Kokose Kazoku. Kazoku is number five here, so that's doing really well. I think that was probably one of the shogi chapters that got it ranking high because those chapters are really good chapters. The Ulusa Samurai, number six. Ruby Dragon, that's not ranked yet, so it's number seven. Sakamoto Deeds at number eight is doing well. Akane Banashi, number nine, also doing well. Aliens Area, that's also not ranked yet. I believe we start ranking at chapter eight. So this is chapter 6, so it's not ranked yet. Blue Box, number 11. Super Smartphone, it's at number 12, so it's still doing well. But it also had a color page, so it doesn't count in the rankings. But it's still very good that chapter 10 got a color page, so we'll see how that does in the next chapter to see if that color page will really hold up. Undead Unluck, number 13, so it's gone up a bit because it's been down at the bottom for a couple of weeks now, I think. P6, number 14, so it's a little bit low, but not at all bad. Mashal is also pretty low, again, not bad because we've got the three series at the bottom here that that's not looking good for. Earth Child, very low. Doron Doronon also extremely low. I think that Doron Doronon will be the next manga, unfortunately, that will be on the chopping block or Earth Child. Both of those, once we get like One Piece and Hunter Hunter back, like those are probably going bye bye. In Mission Yozokura Family, it's very strange to see Mission Yozokura Family at the very bottom. So I don't think, you know, it's in trouble yet. But if it keeps being at the bottom, then that will be an issue. But I think this is the first week in like a while I've seen it at the very bottom. So I don't think it's in any danger of being axed. And that's all for this weekly roundup. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll stick around for more. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you enjoyed it.